Welcome to this week's Endurance for Everyone podcast. Endurance sports are for everyone, and this is the Endurance for Everyone podcast. I'm your co-host, Rob Bozovich, and today I'm joined with group member Amy Wehrman. In today's episode, we will discuss endurance swimming, how Amy got into it, and some of the tips and techniques that she has figured out along the way. Without further ado, let's start the show. Okay, Amy, uh, going to turn the show over here to you in a second. Just going to set it up with a, a few questions, then sit back and let you talk to me like you did pre-roll. Um, for those who haven't been in the group, uh, it is Amy Weirman, and she is, um, I'm going to say, our resident expert in crazy long swimming. And, and I say it that way because, uh, Amy, I've been following you in the E4E group now for a while. And, you know, I like swimming. And, and that being said, we'll get to it maybe in a little bit where I, you know, think I'm pretty tough whenever I build up to a mile and a half to two mile swim. And it seems like you do that, you know, at, on, on an off day as a warm up. You know, you, you've been putting up some major, major, major miles in swimming, literally miles of swimming. And, uh, and not just in the pool, you're out there doing it, you know, open water for the better part of a day. So what I want to know, Amy, and I say, take us back to the beginning, because not everyone's going to be able to jump into the deep end, both feet like you and, and do it, uh, as hardcore as you, where'd you get started? How long you've been swimming for? Take us, take us through your, your journey early on to now. And then, uh, I'll give you a few minutes to talk and come back in once, uh, you know, give us some direction. So take it away. All right. Thanks, Rob. Um, well, um, going back, Rob, I guess um, I started, well, I was, first of all, I was born um, in Pennsylvania, but when I was about 13, we moved to uh, the Jersey Shore year round. And I had grown up on the beach there in the Jersey Shore. And so I was, um, I grew up in the ocean. Uh, as a matter of fact, my siblings um, tease me that I actually came, you know, washed up on the beach in a basket. Um, I was always that little kid that everybody called the fish. Okay. So, um, I was a swimmer when I was younger, but not any type of organized sports or swimming. And I was always that kid that never considered myself an athlete. And so, um, as is pretty typical for somebody with that mentality, I, I went into my twenties, um, not really physically active and, you know, do some, some time you know, where I would bike ride or, or take walks and things like that, but never really consistently stuck with any uh, type of sport um, until my 30s when I, about 15 years ago, and I'm 50, so about at age 34, I was um, extremely unhealthy and um, struggling with some depression and, and um, just the, the life kind of... Um, leans in on you and somebody suggested that I try swimming. And so one night on a very, very freezing cold winter night, I don't remember what month it was, but it was very cold. I walked into a pool, our local pool, um, which was actually an outdoor pool that was covered by a bubble and heated in the winter time. And a, um, actually it was, at a, it was during the day at lunchtime, I went over on a lunch break and I walked into that pool and a lifeguard who was older than me, put her arm around me and said, you've come to the right place. And so um, she showed me around. She introduced me some, to some ladies who were doing water aerobics. And, um, and at, that, at the moment, I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me that I could actually swim laps and be you know, a swimmer. I just knew I needed to get in the water. So I started doing water aerobics. And as we would do our classes, I would notice lap swimmers swimming and um, one night I after class decided I would just see what I could do well I got into the lane and I started swimming and I swam 10 laps and um, I had to stop but I was able to swim and I didn't have goggles and I realized that I could still swim um, and I was very surprised because I thought it was something I would have to learn all over again um, so I started swimming and I continue to do um, other, you know, water activities, aerobics and deep water running and things like that. 
I started swimming laps. I bought a pair of goggles at CVS for about $5. It never occurred to me I should buy a swim cap until later. And I started swimming. And um, within a couple months, I was up to um, close to a mile. I think it was after a year or so that I did a mile. Um, and I um, also, that winter, learned to do a flip turn, which was absolutely revolutionary for me. And um, so there I was. I started doing flip turns and and uh, swimming laps. And before, you know, um, not too long, I was swimming, be able to swim a mile in about an hour. And um, I kept swimming. And the next winter, I heard about a... Um, a swim clinic, which I ended up never going to, but I heard that this woman who had the swim clinic required you to swim uh, bilateral breathing before you could even come into her clinic. So I asked the lifeguard about that, and they taught me how to, to start working on that. It took me um, three hours on a Sunday afternoon to learn bilateral breathing. Um, and that's a miracle. I realize some people have been working on it for years. And I started swimming um, consistently. And so it's 16 years later, and I continue to swim. Um, but as I started getting fitter, and um, I lost a little bit of weight, not anything huge, but I, um, I was getting conditioned. I, um, I started walking, and um, that motivated me um, to get a new bike. I ended up getting a bike. And started riding my bike pretty consistently. And in 2008, I um, Christmas 2007, I decided I was going to do a triathlon. And many people laughed at me, and uh, not meanly, but more like didn't quite take me seriously. And in January of 2008, I set out on a Saturday to to ride my bike 15 miles every Saturday. I went to a, a local rail trail. Started doing that, and in 2008 of July 2008, I did my first sprint triathlon, and um, that journey has been um, uh, since that first triathlon has been a bit up and down because I have um, some very serious knee problems. Placement, so swimming has um, because of that because I'm not running. And only riding my bike minimally these days, I started swimming a lot more. And um, that basically has brought me to this point of open water swimming. So um, if it's okay to keep going, I think I'll talk a little bit about my journey to becoming a distance swimmer. Um, yeah, for some I think years, it's good. Uh, the last if, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump in before I've taken a few notes and uh, for for I'm going to say the newbies out there and like pure newbie, like I'm talking to going back yeah. to, to 16 years ago when you stepped in the pool, you're throwing out a few terms that I know and I've learned myself through my trek but i just want to make sure that we're we're hitting them mm -hmm. up um you know flip turn so generally uh two types of turns open turn would be and correct me if i'm wrong amy that's where you'll swim up uh, basically i'm going to say with your head above water and then you reach out right arm or left arm makes no difference where you touch the side of the pool then you turn your body basically with your head above water the whole time and kick back off the wall Flip turn is what you, as as a novice, would look at the you know pro swimmers or the you know Olympic athletes, and you, it looks like they're swim, gonna swim straight into that wall, and at the last second their head ducks underwater, their feet hit the wall, and they kick off, and then they and then they're out and going again, you know, um, you know. And that being said, is it's funny. I think I'm a decent swimmer. I'm using air quotes on all of every word there um, because I, I can do flip turns. But once again, I'm all self-taught as well. I, I have not had swim lessons. And I don't I, – I do – I'm going to say 80% of my turns as open turns. Two reasons, my personal preference. I am always training for a triathlon, which, you know, is – 
an open water swim, but I'm training in the pool. So I'd rather my swim, my personally, my swim times be n slower than, than mm -hmm. because when I'm in the open water, I'm not going to get those extra boosts, those extra kicks off, you know, off the wall. So the time differential isn't big for me. In addition, I don't know if I need earplugs or something. I don't wear a swim cap and that might help it as well. When I get to doing flip turns, I get water in my ears. And then for about the next three uh -huh. hours, I can't hear anything. And uh -huh. I'm literally motion sickness. So anything you want to jump in on yeah. that. But the only other sure. term I do want to define real quick is, well, bilateral breathing. Um, you know, most people, and I'm like, I'm dominant to the right side. Uh, as such, you know, it's basically if you're swimming, it's where you keep your head in the water, but you roll to the side in order to take a breath um, during your swim stroke. Bilateral is where you're breathing on both your right and your left. Some people make it a habit, uh, and Amy, maybe this is what you were taught, maybe it's every three strokes, so that way it's right, left, right, left. Some people just, you know, like personally, just so, just to force myself, I always look to the same wall. So if I'm going down a length, I'm always breathing to the right, and then when I come back, I always breathe to the left, just to make, just to keep a, a habit, and that's just personally what I do. Um, Anything you want to add to either one of those? Sure, sure. I Well, first of all, <laughs> I think I need to be really clear. The only reason I mentioned flip turns is not because I'm in necessarily an advocate of flip turns. I'm not a swim snob at all. So I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, you need to do everything. You, know, you need to advance to all this, all the specific little, you know, the ways that you – you know, the, you know, uh, the guidelines for what, what makes, you know, quote, unquote, a great swimmer. Okay. Well, I may I, my... may I interject there? And I'm going to say it this way. I'm going to, this is ringing my bell a little bit. I will say I am not a great swimmer. I will win my triathlon. When I say win, I will be first out of the water in my age group, beating everybody by a minute. I still do not know how to dive off of the platform without my goggles ending up around my neck. So proof, okay. proof well, that I can help you with that. <laughs> so, anyways, go on. I just wanted to jump in with that, but continue. You're not. You're not we, a swim we, we were supposed there. to jump off of a. We were supposed to jump off of a ferry this summer, a race that ended up being canceled that we'll be doing in June. So, so jumping off and keeping your goggles on is something I've been working on quite a bit, actually. But, but um, I just wanted to say about the flip turns. And this is this is just these little like I don't know if you want to say psychological or just little things about me that make me me. I am a person who loves rhythm and flow, which is probably a big part of why I'm so obsessed with water. Probably more so than some people. You know, some people just tolerate water. I'm literally the happiest I can ever be when I'm in the water. And I think one of the reasons is because I'm somebody who loves like consistent rhythmic over and over again flow you know so for me the flip turn was simply that I could continue to swim and not stop that was Got all it. it was for me. and and the other thing is and this is very key what you mentioned about the ears. I have terrible ears I wear earplugs I have to wear them all the time um I love and we can talk about this even probably maybe when we talk about how I, what I do to enhance my swimming when I'm not swimming. I love being upside down in the water. I b actually believe that it has mentally helped me through some issues with depression, not necessarily chemical depression, but, uh, you know, some emotional things. I am somebody who literally gets upside down in the water as often as I possibly can. So when I'm swimming, when I do a swimming workout, first of all, my pool workouts are very often not swimming. And I hate to, I, I realized I didn't tell you that previously to this. I'm not somebody who does most of my distance in the pool. My distance is in open water. Um, I do other things in the pool to stay in shape for my swimming. Um, now, there are people in my life that I think would like to see that change. And, and I do think that probably if, if I'm going to advance in my open water swimming, I do need to start swimming more laps. But I'm very much um, like to be away from people when I'm working out. And so I tend to not be super social in the pool. Um, so I do a lot of water running. I do water yoga. 
I do a lot of handstands and gymnastics in the water to stay in shape. And so I'm all about being upside down in the water. And so flip turns allowed me to do that. Um, in regards to the, um, the uh, bilateral breathing, again, um, it's, although it's not something that's required necessarily to be a better swimmer or faster swimmer in triathlon, um, for open water swimming, where you're doing a many, many miles in the water, um, sighting is very important. I mean, sighting is important, of course, for triathlon too. Actually, very important as far as you know, making a, your time and not getting off course. Um, but bilateral breathing has allowed me to be very flexible. And there are times where I'm not bilateral breathing because what I'm watching for is on the left side. And so, or I'm watching birds or I'm watching their certain nature that I want to see. Or perfect example in my lake where I swim, the sun rises to my left. I don't bilateral breathe because I want to see the sunrise when I'm doing a sunrise swim. Um, but it does, the bilateral breathing has helped me to, to maintain a real, I think, a really strong neck for lack of my, I really do think that I have very, very strong um, shoulder and neck muscles. And I do think I do some other weight uh, to, to help that along. But I do believe that the bilateral breathing and being flexible to swimming, to breathing to both sides has, um, has helped with that, that I don't have a, you know, um, as much pain now that I give both sides. Well, if nothing else, I think the bilateral breathing just helps with the symmetry. It'd be the same deal, and it doesn't seem like a lot turning your head to the side to breathe, but it'd be, it'd be like only doing curls with your right arm or only doing a squat oh, with your left you leg. It. You're, you're you using muscles both directions, you know, and, and if nothing else, it you know, it's, um, you know, it, it, it creates that balance for you. So, um, absolutely. Uh, Talk to me a little bit about. I mean, go, let's go. Let's go into it. And, and I'm not. I love triathlon. You know that. But I want to uh, skip over that portion of it and go. I want to hear about this. 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 I've seen you on the group, and I've seen your your photos. And and I'm gonna just hit a couple things, and then sit back and let you talk some more. Talk to me about this open water distance. And the only reason I say that is as a triathlete and as you have done them, it seems like 99% of people, the thing they're afraid of the most in triathlon is A, the swim and B, open water swim. And literally, mm -hmm. I mean, I, when I say I see your reports, you're out there swimming. And I'm not going to ruin it. You can say your longest swim, but I've seen your swims get built up miles and you know, you're out there mm -hmm. for hours. And I mean, are you, t are you, are you solo? Do you have people swimming with you? Do you have a boat Do you, are, are, are following you? How oh. are you eating? I mean, take me through it. Like what got you started okay. into any of it and sure. just take me through the whole progression because it, I, I'm sure. fascinated by this. Sure. Sure. So I'm going to go back just a couple of years, if that's okay. All right. Yes. I, um, a couple years ago, I so as I as I started swimming more and running, not at all uh, because of these knees that need to be replaced. Um, I just I discovered that I love absolutely love being in the water. My happiest times are when I'm in the water, and so I started seeking more and more open water swimming opportunities, which is not easy in Allentown, Pennsylvania. You know, it's there's not a lot of there's there's quite a few lakes around here for the most part none of them can you swim in except for one lake allows that has two races a year of course i sign up for the races so i can do the swim um but i was always searching water if my family knew it people we would be talking about trips and somebody would say hey if we go there do you think you could swim you know there was always this seeking the water seeking the opportunity for amy to swim um, conversations going on. So a couple years ago, uh, it would have been summer of two, uh, you know, maybe 2014, just to give you an example, I got this little taste of open water swimming. Um, I was on a trip, a weekend trip with my nieces in New York, and we were staying on la at Lake Kinesis in a cottage. And I had not planned, I had brought swimsuit and goggles because we were going to be at a lake and it was June and I knew I'd be swimming, or at least I would be, it was colder most people were thinking, oh, it's too cold to swim. Um, I said one you know, day, I wonder if I could swim across this lake. 
And before you knew it, that, that was on a Friday night, I think the next morning, we were, you know, all planning to spend the day on the lake. And, and I said, I think I'm going to try some across that lake. Now I had a, a, a kayak guide and I put my goggles on, I stretched out and I swam a mile across the lake and a mile back. And it was the longest I had ever swam in open water. And I literally was beyond beside myself. I have never, it was the most exciting day. I, I don't even quite, I could almost cry talking about it. It was it literally gave me a flavor of something that I suspected I could do, but I didn't know for sure until I did it. Right. And so after that, I started, you know, we go to the beach, but, you know, it's not always easy to get open water swimming in at the beach. You know, you're in the ocean, there's lifeguards, there's, they're whistling at you, you know, unless you're doing a race and you're in an organized group, sometimes it's hard, um, or it was for me at the time because I wasn't plugged in with other open water swimmers. I was very much you know, kind of, I didn't know there were other, I, I didn't know there were, I, there was a whole world of open water swimming out there that I didn't know about yet. So um, in 2016, the summer was coming up and I, my job was extremely stressful and it's, uh, uh, my busy season is the summer and I was almost panicking thinking, I, I just don't know how I'm going to get any swimming in the summer except in the pool. And, and so I was seeking out some open water swimming opportunities and I found a, um, a, a, a trainer, uh, an open water swimming trainer, who actually his name um, w w is Jason Kildary. He just passed away, Rob, a couple oh. weeks ago at age 35. Yeah, devastating to our triathlon community here. I mean, a sweet, amazing, wonderful guy who has um, encouraged so many people. Well, he had a training um, camp in New Jersey where you could go and pay 15 bucks to swim. He had four hour windows available for me as a slow swimmer. That seemed like heaven because I could, even when I would go to clinics and things, I could never get along swimming because I'm so, I'm not a fast swimmer. So if it was an hour clinic, I'd get an hour swimming, you know, by the time you get in and out. Um, well, I started uh, all summer or for most of the summer, I woke up at four o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and drove to New Jersey and had a four hour window to swim in this lake. I swam a loop. It was just a third mile, a third of a mile loop, I believe. So I would swim three loops to get a mile in. Well, I started setting goals, three mile swims in that time. And that's what I did. So I trained myself on this, what I call rat race, you know, this little route going in circles you know, and, but it was my only opportunity for open water swimming. And so I took it and I spent a lot of money that summer on gas and, and travel. And sometimes I would stay overnight and do Saturday and Saturday sessions. I would do both sessions and um, I started training myself with nutrition. And I know we can, you want to talk about that and, and it probably be more, you know, I'll talk about it more as I talk about the distances I started growing into, but um, I started training myself, you know, and have put a couple bananas out there and stop every hour to have a banana. And, and so that's what I did all summer in 2016. And then this, the fall came. And again, as so many years in my life, my swimming stopped because I thought you didn't swim after September. And I uh, got back in the pool and um, it was 2000, you know, going into 2017, my mom had just passed in September of 2016, after years of taking care of her. And my father was still alive, 92 years old. And um, in um, the spring of last year, of this past year, of this 2017, I, um, I started dreaming more and more about open water swimming. And um, I had put it off, you know, some of the opportunities I had for a long time because um, there was a lot going on in my life with work and two elderly parents and some demands there um, uh, that not just for me, but for all me and all my siblings. Um, and I, uh, an opportunity came up for me to go to um, Florida in April um, for some business. And I was going to stay in Florida for a month and actually had hoped, um, I believe at that time. Yeah, I think I knew Roxanne or of Roxanne and I think I thought that I may connect with some people in I believe that was the case in um, Orlando anyway um, I started um, dreaming about some swimming in Florida 
and planning this trip. And um, a couple days before the trip, um, I had to cancel because my father passed away. And so it was April um, of 2017. And again, another open water swimming dream seemed to be fizzling. And I was disappointed, but I, I just, you know, had to keep on pressing on. And um, out of the blue um, came an opportunity for me um, through a, a, a triathlete mentor who had mentored me since 2008, um, um, introduced me to a um, open water swimming coach who happened to be having a clinic in May of 2017. That was this last spring. Seems like a long time ago. And um, I, um, this clinic was going to be at a lake called Blue Marsh Lake, which is uh, 42 miles, I believe it is, from my house. And I literally, um, I, I had no idea that you could swim at Blue Marsh Lake. Every other lake in our area you cannot swim in. And so I um, anticipated this clinic. I went to this clinic and got into that lake. And swam, I think it was May 6th, and really, I never got out. I really, to this day, last Saturday, December 23rd, I swam in Blue Marsh Lake. I, I, um, I went to the clinic. I learned a little bit about the lake. Um, of course, you know, got some tips, triathlon tips and things like that. There's more there just for the swim and to meet other swimmers. And it opened up a world for me, Rob, that I had, um, I, I kind of knew would happen. I, I kind of had many years of patience knowing that at some point my swimming would kind of take off, but it came at a mo at a time when I didn't quite expect it because of some tragedy and, and, and grief that was happening. And so I took my grief to the lake and have swam I think I should have checked before this call, Rob, but I think I'm up to about probably at least 130 miles since May 6th. That's more than some people Marsh have uh, have ran or swam or ran or biked, I should say. I know. You know, and swimming's the I know. A mile of swimming it, it takes a lot longer a, a time and you know to do than a mile of running. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it sure does. So um, so yeah, so we had, I, I, I literally kind of went through a period of time where I kept pinching myself saying, I, when am I going to wake up from this dream? Because it literally, um, was a dream come true, Rob. I, I don't even know how to explain to you. I, I mean, I thought I, I was expecting a whole nother busy summer, my busy season. I worked these crazy long hours, um, and pretty intense work in the summertime with the job that I had. And, um, and I wasn't sure how I was going to have the wherewithal, but I did. Um, this is, I mean, I started swimming in May, June, did some swims. July was my peak. I, I don't remember what the mileage was in July, but there were Wednesday mornings where the weather, where the sun was, uh, you know, the weather looked great. I would leave my house in McGundry, Pennsylvania at four. I would wake up at 4 a.m., I would leave by five. It was about an hour drive out to the lake, not quite an hour. Pull into the lake um, and be in the water by 6.15 or 6.30 and get in a two, quick two-mile swim, sometimes only a mile, sunrise swim, change, get out of the wetsuit, drive home, and be at my desk working by 9 o'clock in the morning. That is is dedication and and that being said is i know uh, and, and you're saying you're doing during the week and, and i know i saw some weekend super long oh swims. yeah that, so for sure what, so then the weekend would be the long swim, the saturday and sometimes on a sunday afternoon um if i could but usually at the lake that we swim we swim in a no wake area um the boats come through but they're at, at, um they have to go very slow because it's no wake um I learned at that clinic um, about a swim buoy, which was like, I, I didn't learn about it. I already had one. I had bought one to take to Florida with me, not really knowing how to use it. 
Um, and of course, I didn't go to Florida like I had planned. So I took it to the swim clinic and the coach there taught me how to use it. Really was not much to learn, except that I think it's such a big deal. Like, what a pain to pull this little buoy behind you. Isn't it distracting it? No, it is the most wonderful little blessing. It is this big pink bubble that, that makes you extremely visible to people on boats, occasionally a jet ski. Our lake doesn't have lots of jet skis. Um, uh, paddle boarders, it makes you visible. It also makes you visible to the birds because they circle you occasionally. <laughs> just to stop in. They're, they're just checking out to see what's happening there, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. now, yeah. And, I, and I've seen... I, and I'm sharing then, I guess, what I've seen of your posts in the group. Um, you know, you're you're out there five, six, seven hours, and and and, and I remember <laughs> one of your posts you had like, and do you tie it to the bag? Uh, this it looks like you had a bag, and did you tie it to the buoy? And that's where you have like your your food, your water, like what all yes. what all goes into yes. that? Because you know, because you yeah, if I'm correct, cool. you're out there solo majority of the time yeah. for these, aren't you? Yeah. Right, I am, and I might be a little bit unconventional, Rob, and and so I want to um, make sure that I'm being very, um, you know, that I'm I'm um, sharing the you know integrity of of open water swimming. Uh, you know, there are people in our sport, a lot of people who probably would say I shouldn't be swimming by myself. Um, there are just as many who are like, that's fine to swim by yourself as long as you do take all the safety precautions that you can. And I have, I am extremely committed to safety. I have an emergency cell phone, an old iPhone that has, that I have added to my plan that I take with me in my dry bag. Um, I don't always swim with a partner, although I do through this, this last year and, and all these amazing opportunities have opened up to me. I do have some swim partners but all of them are faster than me, every one of them. I am absolutely the slowest of the swimmers. And um, um, that, you know, I can hold people back, although everybody's extremely gracious. So I'm big on, please, people, go ahead. I'll see you up there. You know, we'll, I'll see you on your way back. You know, I've, I've learned some tricks to swimming with faster swimmers that allow me to still get the time with them that I would like to have by – turning around when I see them turn around, I turn around so they catch up, that type of thing. Um, but um, nutritionally, you know, many swimmers, many, many open water swimmers that you would see on, on other, you know, on groups, you know, such as, you know, um, Did You Swim Today or Open Water Swimming Association, things like that, uh, or, or um, you know, Marathon Swimming Association, groups like that. You would see in many cases swimmers are, are – are swimming with a uh, kayaker. Okay. Um, I have friends whose husbands kayak the she swims, she kayaks, he swims, you know, I am single. I don't have a husband who kayaks. Mm -hmm. um, I would love one. <laughs> no, um, but I, so I, I, you know, I'm not, you know, saying, Oh, I'm by myself. I'm not, of course I have lo a huge family and many athletes in my life, but I don't like to be tied to other people's schedules when I swim. And so I've made a decision to swim by myself. I have the support of my coach and many others in our group who, who um, have seen the, 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 um, the efforts I go to, to being safe. And um, I have never had a situation yet. Uh, you know, I mean, there's been some dicey situations where you have a little current or, you know, the water's not quite the quality you were hoping for that day or something like that. But, but, um, you know, I, I pack that phone, I pack water. Um, yes, I tether, you asked about the nutrition. I have a dry bag, um, that I use that has the phone and my car keys in it. Um, some athletes, some swimmers do pack that bag with nutrition I like to have, I don't like to have to keep opening that bag. So I came up with a little system um, to tether nutrition and fluids to my dry bag. And so I fill my water bottles. If I'm doing the one time, my longest swim was a six mile swim. I prepped for that six mile swim. Um, I actually only prepped for a five. It was a mile into 
an amazing swim that I realized it was the day for me to PR. So I actually added a mile to my course, which was basically swimming three miles out into the lake and three miles back. Um, I left, started very early in the morning, um, you know, so that I would be back even before by 11 or noon before the day got very busy on the lake. Um, but I don't know if you want me to talk about the specifics. I have a little thing that I've Jimmy rigged where yeah, I, I mean, if you up, could, um, you know? if you want to go more into the specifics, like my, and a couple of my questions are, and and I'm making assumptions, and then I'm going to say it. You can tell me right or wrong or what you do. When okay. do you two three things? When I say step me through it, are you wearing uh, like a watch, or do you know like predetermined like how yeah. far these are? What do you do? You, like some of us, and I'm going to say like John as an example. He sets his watch to beep to tell him like you're you're, t- you're okay. Time to blank. Take nutrition or water or whatever. Do you do that, or is mm-hmm. it like about every so mm-hmm. often? And last yeah. with that is. Um, you say you're in a lake, so I know obviously it gets shallower at the edge, you'd imagine. Are you swimming to the edge, going up, pulling your dry bag, mm-hmm. standing and eating, or are you like just treading water out in the middle? Like, what do you, like, tell me all that. Both. 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 I, I do, I do go up to the side of the lake. I need to not do that more because in marathon swimming, um, let's say you're, doing a documented, and I won't get into this in detail because we can get into this later if you'd like, if we have time, but in marathon swimming, you know, there's these regulations, just like there are in, in, in triathlon and any sport, there are regulations. Um, you know, the, the bare bottom regulation is that one swimsuit, one cap, and one pair of goggles. You're not wearing a wetsuit. You're not wearing gloves. You're not wearing a neoprene cap. You're not wearing two caps to be extra warm. You are wearing... In, you know, in, according to the regulations of marathon swimming, you're wearing one swimsuit. Now, in my case, I do wear um, a swimsuit that has shorts, uh, compression shorts attached or underneath um, um, just for my own comfort and because of my weight, I'm more comfortable that way. Um, but I, um, you know, I head out. Um, as far as the nutrition goes um, and timing, I do use a Garmin 920 to um, document those distances. That's how you saw when you see those neat maps where it shows exactly where I went, you know, and I, I might write little notes on it or something like that. That was through my Garmin. That, that was documented um, on my Garmin watch, but I do not set my time because I'm very conscious of time and rhythms. I know that when I get to the first turn, I often stop. But what I started to say is I will go to the side of the lake um, because I'm not worried about touching the bottom. Um, but regu- regulation-wise, um, if you to have a docked swim um, that's being, um, you know, that's being um, um, that's under the guidelines of, of the sport, and it's going to be a documented swim you cannot touch the bottom you cannot touch a boat so you may even if you have a kayak support in our sport in open water swimming this is a huge major part of the sport is learning how to feed and and that's why even your partner whoever your who's your kayaker they need to know you well and be able to to anticipate what your needs are what food um, if you Google or if somebody's getting into swimming like I am and I'm, I'm reading up on all these swims, I follow swimmers. There's all these well-known swimmers. They might, they wouldn't be names that are probably familiar to you, but in my, in the sport, there are people that I follow and their swims are documented and there's logs that they're, the people on the boat, their support team has logged at everything they put in their mouth. Every but in some cases, it's every 20 minutes, usually 20 to every 20 to 30 minutes. It shouldn't be, you know, you should not really, if you're doing a distance swim, you really shouldn't ever go an hour without eating. Although there are times, because I'm not using always as many calories as somebody who's swimming twice my um my speed or something like that. You know, there are t- there are certainly times where I go an hour without feeding, but technically you really should stop every half hour or so and, and do a feed. Um, very often um, it's literally just stopping and treading water, which for me is extremely easy. 
I take it for granted. And once in a while, I'm out with another swimmer who has to really work to tread water and stay above. And I realize how lucky I am to be able to float the way I do. And it's one of the reasons I can swim six miles like it's nothing. Not like it's nothing, but, you know, like it's a regular day. You know, Um, this summer, you know, my longest swim this past summer was six miles. This coming summer, there will be a lot of six mile swims, hopefully more 10 and 12 mile swim, you know, work up to a much, you know, much longer swim. Um, but so yeah, just to break it down, the food, you know, in my case this summer, my, this is my magic formula. It's actually changed a little bit since then, but, but when I was getting started, um, I had my magic formula was like a fruit and a fruit and nut bar. I forget the brand that I buy some generic brand. Um, cut it up into pieces and I would put it into a pill box. So there'd be seven feedings of one bite. Okay. And that was enough for me to stop every half hour, take a bite of the fruit and nut bar and some water, or in some cases, especially during those really crazy hot summer swims, I did um, a full bottle of water and a full bottle of some type of, you know, um, you know, energy drink, something like a Gatorade. Right. I would use other, you know, I might use emergency or something like that mixed with water just to, for some LF, extra electrolytes. Um, and so I would stop and do a feed and then, you know, about every half hour and then halfway through the swim, I had another little container, um, which was like a little pill, uh, pill container filled with sports beans. That's, those were great for me. They worked really well for me. They weren't real chewy. They were like the jelly bean kind. Yep. Um, and I would do those. Um, and I kept all of those little, the two tubes in another water, seal, you know, water sealed water bottle that just pulled along on my um, tethered on my um, swim buoy. Cool. Um, I also experiment. Yeah. I also experimented with, you know, we've talked about, I think John, uh, has said that he uses, I believe it was John that uses um, baked potatoes or, or potatoes on, on during races, I believe, um, or somebody uh, on the group does. Uh, so that might I, be in the group. I don't recall John ever saying that, but uh, yeah, I'll be no, sure to ask okay. him and we can bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody talked about potato, you know how potatoes are popular right now in triathlon. Um, one thing that I tried was um, rice. Uh, sticky, you know, I would make sticky rice in the rice pot. I use a lot of sticky rice because I do Asian cooking. Um, and um, I would just do some rice and balsamic vinegar and a little olive oil mixed in together into like a, into a, into a paste. And I made these little tubes that you, that I would put them in. And then that tube goes into the bigger bottle. So real easy, just squirt that tube into your mouth for those carbs. Um, very fast acting um, carbs. I don't always know all the terminology uh, unless I'm looking at it in writing. Um, and then, um, you know, just continue on with the swim. Um, um, yeah. Cool. So that, well, your, yeah. that answered a lot of them. <clears throat> and what I was going to say here is I'm just looking at the time and realizing, uh, the, you know, the length of the next two or three things that I would be asking would put us at probably like a two and a half hour show. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have a couple of things I'm just going to ask you, kind of like put a bow on it, wrap it up here. Um, but then, you know, because okay. you had talked about off, um, you know, Mike there before, you had, you know, talked about Ice Mound. You said that here. You had talked a little bit about marathon swimming. These all seem like very good topics that I think might be... Uh an entire other show so just coming yeah. kind of circling back to a little bit of, of your journey then um you know and then um you know just my, my question and, and maybe this is my observation you, you you had said about marathon swimming how there's rules and regulations and so forth but it seems to me and i'm not saying like you're out there just for a day in the park type of deal because what you're doing is very uh, very challenging and you know so forth but it seems to me like you're more at this point interested in, it's like the journey versus the destination it sounds like you're out there more for the fitness and this is this is Amy time not necessarily like you're trying to um, set some sort of land speed or I guess it'd be a water speed record out there is, is that a fair 
fair assumption that this is more it. like this is for you, huh? So then, because my next question, it. my next it, question yeah. was going to be, do you have like what I was going to say? What's what's 2018 entail? It, or could we expect to see you doing some races, or is it going to be more of a just continuing down your fitness journey here? And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think I know which way it sounds like it's going there. That's a good question. Yeah, and that's it's a question that I talked about just on Saturday after our our brief um, winter swim. Um, I had some uh, uh, coffee time actually with uh, my dear friend Louise, who is also a coach, and I call her my coach. I, I wouldn't say I'm probably her most profitable <laughs> um, client right now, but we're friends and we we swim together, and so I I, I do call her my coach. Um, and she is a certified open water swimmer coach, open water swimming coach. Um, and we talked about that because this time of year, well, you guys know, this is no joke, right? You got to get in, you got to get your registrations in for races. Things are selling out. Everybody's talking about their lineup. And, um, although I do do a couple, um, organized swims, um, and I might do more as this summer unfolds. I, um, I, I did even on Saturday, I, I, I felt like I was kind of almost breaking it to her and at all, of course, that was not her response at all it was like, you need to do what makes Amy happy, you know, and, and I, and I told her what makes me happy right now. I need another year in this lake by myself. I, I mean, I love the social aspect and I, I think I've become a little bit, almost like a little bit of an ambassador for Blue Marsh Lake because I, out of everybody in the group except for maybe one i live close pretty close even though it's 42 miles away a lot of the people that swim in that lake come from a further distance and so i can get there a little bit easier on weekday mornings and things like that and it's kind of i've it's fallen in a place a little bit that you know I, i'm not is amy swimming amy are you swimming you know like you know um I, i'm swimming as much as i possibly can in that lake and i love that lake i'm all about the place I'm all about showing people around. I just posted earlier today on my Facebook. If anybody who wants to friend me on Facebook to learn more about my swimming is, is welcome to do that. I just posted this morning about Blue Marsh Lake. Uh, you know, there was a, a map that showed all the no um, no wake areas, and I'm trying to you know kind of get people excited about next summer. Can you people who dream about open water swimming and don't know how they would even implement it? This is the way to do it. Show up at a clinic in May and start swimming with us, you know. Um, and I'm always open to meeting people in that lake to swim, um, even if I'm trying to get my own swim in, you know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I am doing a couple races, Rob. Um, there's one called Steel Man that we do at Lake Naka Mix and that I do every year. I've done it for the last five years. It's a, a one-and-a-half-mile or a three-mile swim. I tend to do the one and a half mile, even though I could easily do the three mile swim. I do the one and a half because I'm a little bit slower. It's the one time a year that I actually get done before a lot of other people that are swimming longer distance and I can cheer other people on. I love cheering on other swimmers and I lose that opportunity at races because I tend to be end of the pack. And um, I'm not at all... um, somebody who hate it's not that I don't like being end of the pack or that that I'm majorly self-conscious about it but I but it can be lonely at times you know what I mean and so one thing I really enjoy is cheering other um, athletes on so if I have an opportunity um, if if I do an aqua bike race for example and there's an Olympic distance or there's a um, a sprint instance I can do the 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 you know, if I've trained on my bike, I can do a 24 mile bike ride, right? So I could do the, the Olympic distance, but I don't, I do the sprint so that I can be around when other people are finishing and, and have that opportunity to cheer other people on. Um, um, so yeah, so I'm not racing loads. There are a couple swims in New York, um, that, um, that I've, um, that have come across my path that I, would be eligible for there's a lot of swims right now rob that i'm capable of doing but i wouldn't be eligible because i wouldn't make their cutoff time and so um that can be a little frustrating i try not to focus on it um it i totally understand why there are 
cutoffs. And I believe if I was ever a race director, I, I would be all for the cutoff because I understand, you know, it's business, you know what I mean? And you, you can only uh, reserve spaces and, and time, you know, places for so long and things like that. But because of that, um, I don't do as many races as um, maybe some in my world think that I could or should do. <laughs> gotcha. That answer your question. Very answers it very well. So, hey, I uh, like I said. Can I say got... one other thing, Rob? Please feel free. Just one other thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I know we need to finish up, but one of the things that motivates me, and and I guess I'm hoping that this might inspire some others, is that I'm a little bit of an adventurer. You probably picked up on this. Yes. I tend to be very, um, I tend to be pretty self-motivated. I, I am not one of those people that needs others out there swimming to get me in. I, I'm, I'm, I'm that person getting others in. I, I often, I often guilt people and say, well, I'm swimming. Why aren't, you know, you should show up, you know? Um, but one thing I love to do is explore. And so, um, part of my whole thrust with another summer in, in Blue Marsh is to explore. I want to explore more coves, more areas of the lake, um, and that's going to require me doing more, doing longer distances. That's why I'm talking about possibly getting into some six, to some regular seven, eight, nine, ten mile swims, which for me could be eight, nine, ten hour swims, depending on how much um, speed I can improve on this winter in the pool. Um, so. Um, yeah, um, just, you know, I, I'm hoping that maybe that um, sharing that might inspire some others um, to pursue their passion. If they love swimming, uh, if they would just get in the water and swim and not be maybe so hung up on um, necessarily having to be racing. Right. Very, very well said. And uh, what I'm going to do is, like, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. And what I'm going to do is throw it out there uh, on your behalf. And you didn't say this to you before, but anyone who's within uh, the distance, and I wrote it down, and you had said it. If they missed it, I believe it is Blue Marsh Lake. If you're anywhere near the vicinity next year, uh, feel free to grab a kayak or jump in the water and join Amy. She's going to be out there pretty much Please. every day next year in 2018, and uh, he's going to be doing some amazing things and. You don't have to go and swim the whole uh, 10 miles with her, but, you know, maybe join her for a mile or two. Would you like a little company Absolutely. out there? <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. I would love it. I, I, Blue March is such a beautiful place. Even if you're far away, you should Google it and um, just take a look at the lake. Um, if you want me to send you pictures, I'm happy to do that. We have a we have a blue heron who has become our friend. We also have a lake monster called um, what did we name it? Um, Indigo Quagmire, um, a, a, a very funny lake monster who who only um, exudes positive energy when we're in the lake swimming. And um, so I'm always looking for for him and always looking for the blue heron when I'm swimming and um, usually shows up I, you know most days he shows up <laughs> fantastic well hey amy i want to be thank you for being so kind with your time and like i said we may get you back on here to go over some of these other issues other not issues other uh topics and swimming things here but uh yeah i just want to wrap it up and you know on behalf of the group say you know keep posting um everything you're doing it's very fun to to watch and see your progress and uh you know thank you you know, for being so kind with your time today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Rob. And thanks also to John and Roxanne and all the others in the group that I've gotten to know. Um, Endurance for Everyone is going to have an awesome 2018. I absolutely know that um, there's going to be a lot more people exposed to um, endurance sports at all levels. And um, there's quite a bit of, um, of expertise available to those people. And so I would encourage everybody who has already joined or, um, or to also send invitations to your friends to join. Anybody who's looking to um, being outside this year and hiking, swimming, kayaking, biking, running, this is the place to go to, for information and encouragement. Couldn't have said it any better. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop us off right now. Thanks once again. 
You heard it from Amy. You just need to get in the water and never get out. I guess the same could apply for hitting the trail, track, or road. I think that was a great conversation, and I just want to thank our guest for coming on and being so open. If you've listened this far, I think you just might be e for e material. So if you're not already a member of the group, head over to Facebook and check us out. If you have a chance, please share the show with someone or leave us a review wherever you're listening to this. Our contact information will be coming right up. Just remember, this was the Endurance for Everyone podcast, and Endurance Sports is for everyone. Thanks for listening to the Endurance for Everyone podcast. If you have comments or questions for the show, send an email to teame4e at enduranceforeveryone.com. And remember, swim calm, bike strong, and run steady.